guys, Sheriff Synergy here, and a brand new TV spot for the Sonic Movie 2 dropped, and I know a ton have dropped over the last week, but this was the real big one. This There was so much going on in this one, and I thought I'd drop a video on it, just to get you guys caught up with everything that happened in that TV spot. Right before we get started, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and in the last video I said that I would do shoutouts to the people that commented, and I will be announcing the people that I'm shoutouting at the end of this video and also I'm going to be doing it again so if you comment on this video you'll be getting a shout out in the next video but without further ado let's get started so they put this TV spot out to promote the, the Super Bowl which is happening on Sunday February 13th and I feel like it's an indication that we're getting a proper official full trailer like another full trailer at the Super Bowl and I felt like this was like a little like teaser for that See, I was already under the assumption that they dropped something for the Super Bowl, I just didn't know what, and this kind of just gives me more hope because Paramount tends to show a lot of things off at the Super Bowl, and Sonic Movie 2 is their biggest project this year, by far. There is not another Paramount project that's going to be as big as the Sonic Movie 2 this year anyway. The teaser starts with Sonic running across water, which is pretty cool. It reminds me of Generations, you know, Sonic is afraid of water, and he could use his speed to, like, avoid that fear. And, you know, you could kind of do that in Sonic Generations and a few other Sonic games, I believe. If you're running, like, underwater, you can just run across it. And that was pretty cool to see. Um, it has Knuckles in the background just saying Sonic's name. And Idris Elba's voice sounds so great as Knuckles. I'm glad we got a brand new, like, voice clip. We've been getting a lot of Knuckles clip, but we haven't been getting, like, his voice. We, we know Knuckles looks awesome. We just need to hear the voice more, and we did, and it delivered, and I'm really glad that Idris Elba pulled it off, even though I knew he was going to as soon as they announced it. He, he's just a perfect Knuckles. Sonic the Hedgehog. It looks cool as Knuckles' eyes glow like a pinkish red. I, I mean, I'm sure some people are going to argue that it's just red, but to me anyways, like, I could, I'm probably wrong, but it just looked a little pinkish, and I thought that was like a little reference to like Super Knuckles, I don't know, like, in Sonic 3, which this game does seem like it's loosely based off a combination of Sonic 2 and Sonic 3. But I thought, like, it may, it, if it's pink, you know, that's like Super Knuckles' form. But that's probably not the reason, and I'm probably reaching. But in my head, I'd like to think that anyway. We get the Donut Lord telling Sonic that he could finally be a hero. And then we get a shot of Sonic going down what I presume to be Ice Cap. I mean, you know, he's skating down a snowy mountain. What do they want us to think it is in, like, in the Sonic universe? It's probably Ice Cap. But this time, like, we also get Knuckles right behind Sonic on his own skateboard coming down with him. In the original TV spots we've been getting, we never got to see Knuckles on that mountain. So it's just a continuation of that scene. And I'm assuming Knuckles was, like, supposed to be the surprise on that mountain until this TV spot dropped and now we know. Which is pretty cool, like, they're probably going to have a really nice battle up there. Sonic refers to Knuckles as the Winter Soldier, who is Bucky Barnes from the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and... Knuckles says a line, which is, It is my destiny to destroy you, which is really interesting, because this, I feel like, this is like, this is more of a theory, but I feel like the whole Sonic vs. Knuckles dynamic will mostly be of, maybe Knuckles' is like, ancestors, or maybe his, like, parents, and all that. They kind of hate Sonic, which is kind of apparent from the first movie when the Echidna tribe goes after Sonic. Maybe Knuckles was most likely also a baby at the, oh, he was a baby at the same time. And as he grew up, he was probably told things left and right about like, oh, this Sonic guy, like we gotta get him one day. And that's probably why Knuckles has this like hatred for Sonic. But then I believe Dr. Robotnik uses that hatred that he has against Sonic to manipulate him into helping him find the Master Emerald, the Chaos Emerald, to go get Sonic. We get this pretty awesome look at Sonic and Knuckles about to punch each other, which I believe should be like the next promotional poster. The, if they don't make that like the next poster or anything, that's a big missed opportunity right there. We then get our first looks at the Death Egg Robot from Sonic 2. He does look a little different, but it's clearly the Death Egg Robot. That robot has gotten a few little tweaked redesigns over the years, so it's not anything new. But we did not know we were going to see the Death Egg Robot in the Sonic movie too. Most of us believed like Metal Sonic at most, but seeing the Death Egg Robot in live action is pretty awesome. And it kind of shows all the trickery they do in these trailers because that shot, it, it, it clearly shows that the Death Egg Robot was the one that shot Sonic in the air in the first trailer when he was like on the plane and then he gets shot with a missile. 
we all were assuming that was from Eggman because that's what the first trailer made us believe. They wanted us to think that. And they were probably just saving this Death Egg robot for the Super Bowl reveal trailer and stuff. And now we know that it was the su it was the Death Egg robot that shot Sonic off the plane. And then we get a few cool scenes of Sonic escaping some danger and that's where this little teaser ends. And honestly, this teaser kind of changed so much for me personally about seeing this movie. Like, I knew this movie was going to be good at best. But then when I saw this teaser, I was like, whoa, there's, there's, there's like a huge chance this movie could be really, really good. You know, um, I was thinking this earlier after I saw this teaser, I was like, Sonic movie 2, it's odd how this movie has potential to be one of the greatest 2022 movies. Obviously, we also have movies like The Batman, Doctor Strange 2, etc. But it's so crazy how the first one was okay, obviously. But leading up to the first one, we thought it was just going to be another horrible, horrible movie. And now we're at the second, we've, we've got into the second movie, and we're able to say that this movie is, like, in terms of excitement, is up there with all these giant, giant movies we know are most likely going to be pretty awesome. And it's, it's nice to see that for Sonic, obviously it's not a game, but it's Sonic related. Sonic as a whole has had, like, like bad representation there's lots of people when they think sonic are like oh yeah bad games and bad games equal bad franchise right but i think it's pretty good for the side things that sega are doing for sonic like besides video games to be really good to drive people to try the games out more maybe they'll try some of the past games they thought were bad but weren't bad or maybe they'll actually try bad games like Sonic Forces and play that and then that's not a good thing but in turn like what this means for like Sonic Frontiers I do think after the success of this movie there's always gonna be a lot of new fans even the Sonic movie one brought in a lot of new fans I think it's perfect we need more new fans and even if they're from other Sonic um, media that aren't games they'll ultimately all come to the games eventually and that'll be good for Sega hoping that Sonic Frontiers is a good game though. That's 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 the big that's the big part. Overall, this trailer was awesome, and I can't wait for the movie on April 8th or or the 1st of April if you're like in the UK or the Philippines, which is cool. That means I have to avoid spoilers for a week, but I'm probably not going to. I kind of like reading spoilers. But anyways, here's the comment I'm shouting out for this video. This is from Cobra Dude. Shout out to you, Cobra Dude. If Silver Blaze and Tika aren't playable in Frontiers, Sega can shove the game up their butts because I'm not buying it. And hey, fair enough, man. I mean, he's right. They need to have every Sonic character we've ever seen be playable in Sonic Frontiers for it to be a good game. I think if we find out that there's only a few playable characters or only one playable character, then this game will ultimately fail and we just shouldn't have played, just, we should never play it. Especially Tika. I think she's the most important one. I think we really need her to be playable in Sonic Frontiers because if she's not playable in Sonic Frontiers, then what's the point? There is absolutely no point in playing a game like that. Like, even all these past Sonic games, think about it. What was the most mid part about Sonic Generations? The fact that you couldn't play as T-Call. What was the most mid part about the adventure games? That you couldn't play as T-Call, but she was there. But you couldn't play as her. I can't even play adventure anymore. I always have to have the mod on where you could play as T-Call. That is the only way you'll ever catch me playing Sonic Adventure. But anyways, if you want to get a shout out too, comment on this video. And I'll be shouting you out in the next video. See you guys next time.